Okay, I'll call the personnel committee meeting to order. 501. First item is to review and adopt the minutes from the last meeting. And Betty has pointed out that there was an omission that needs to be corrected, and that is that she was present. And I I think when it, I don't know if you we were at the prior meeting. I was not at the prior meeting. I thought Betty might have meant Brenda. And I also was at the meeting last time, but by Zoom. So those are two things. I think, yeah, I, might I think Betty that. was Betty should be Brenda for the missed the prior meeting. And then oh, and whoever said, attended by Zoom, I also attended by Zoom. Okay. Oh, it said that he noted that Betty did not attend the last meeting, but up it, top, but it doesn't say members included at that. That last meeting, yeah. So wherever it says someone was there by Zoom, I should also be there yes, by Zoom, yes. and I should be the Betty who missed the prior. Yes, I Brenda, mean, Brenda should be the I Betty. I will amend the minutes. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. All right. Hearing those changes, I have a motion. So moved. Motion made. Second. And seconded to approve the minutes as amended. I'll do a roll call vote. Vote. Joyce. Aye. Betty. Yes. Brenda. Aye. Myself. Aye. Okay. Moving on to the next thing, we'll go back and discuss the draft personnel policies. And one of the things that we had was uh, some comments made by Lynn. We can maybe discuss those and. Oh, from there. A lot of what we just to update you, Chris, on what we were doing. A lot of, of course, you're getting you're just getting into this, but Brian was, you know, we were Brian had done so much legwork in this that he was, you know, very familiar with the ins and outs of it. But in this case, you know, we'll um I don't know. You probably have not had a chance to fully review. I did. I read the whole thing today. I can't see straight. But, uh, it was in there a long time. Um, and I probably did it in a vacuum, not seeing, you know, the amendments that you did and everything. I mean, there's everything in here. Um, I just made some notes um, from my own experience and um, some questions and then noted what I think or maybe one or two things that I didn't see, but I'll just okay. let you folks go through Lynn's comments. And I thought she might come, so. Okay. But I don't see her, so maybe her schedule changed. Well then, since we all have Lynn's comments, I guess we yeah. can start. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Did we, um, did we, they, did Brian send out a copy before he left of all of the things that we had already addressed. I, I'm having trouble finding that. I mean, I've got the very old, old, old copy that, and you know, is months old, and we've changed it um, many times. But was there that an email that went out that had yeah. a newer version? I believe so. I can't yeah. remember what Lynn sent out on Friday. I further say page two twenty nine. Yeah, so that or it should have come. It still may show up. I don't know how you have your emails, but in my case, it came comes through with Brian, mm -hmm. so I haven't changed that yet. But yeah, we did get an updated one with that draft policy. Yeah, I'm not sure it actually okay. come from Brian because it was before his last day, wasn't it? Three it seven. Be, oh, oh no. There was a final. That was before his last. There was a final draft of personnel policies. It says draft two, and that was sent on three seven. Yes. And that was sent by Lynn. Okay. Sorry. But it would say Brian on it. Yeah, yeah it would say. Yes. It would technically, yeah. It came from the county <laughs> And hopefully we got that situation fixed. So from the town admin email. Yes. Okay. There it is. Thank you. Yeah. For some reason, it wasn't coming up when I put the word personnel in. And yeah. thanks. Yeah. 
So in that choice, that should have a majority of what Brian, you know, our amendments were should be added in there with that, like a February something date. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one, yeah, draft two. Okay, good. I'm looking at the right thing then. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll go, we can start by discussing each of Lynn's comments one by one. Um, the first one was, she was making reference on page four with the I-9 and the Corey information to be kept separate. Um, the only comment I had on that is um, that preceding that, there's a paragraph stating that all medical records and files from the applicant, you know, that they're to be kept separately. So I don't know if that's the same that she's referring to. Yeah, it says the same thing about separately. My my, if in case anyone else has this problem, when I printed it out, the pagination is different. So for me, the section she's talking about there is not on page four; it's at the very bottom of page five. But um, there also is at the end of that section, there's all medical records are to be kept separately. Again, that doesn't address the glory, which must be addressed elsewhere. So who's usually verifying the I-9, the accountant or the treasurer or the payroll person? Do we know? I do not. So that needs to be done on the first day of employment. And so whoever, usually it's one person because it's for Onboarding purposes. So you do the I 9, you do the W 2, you do the COBRA or the health insurance information. So typically, it's, if there's a locked file cabinet, there's just one folder that's I 9 that has everybody's stuff in it and certification that they show the documentation. Because your medical forms, your HIPAA stuff, is a completely separate locked thing. And then you have all your other employee records that you refer to elsewhere in policies. But I don't know if it's decentralized to heat and you're having the department head verify yeah. the I-9. Okay. It's usually a payroll function when someone starts and they're doing all those paperwork kind of things. All right. Well, you know, we, we, we can get to the bottom of this. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. And Corey's just typically for your police, by, you know, people working with children, right. adults at risk, things like that. All like anybody in the rec department. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, then we'll so so note that and move on to the next one, which was the compensation time, page twenty three. She refers to which again isn't going to match up with everybody's copies. That. I definitely agree with her. It needs to be changed. That it's not when that was put in place. It is in total, so it's not per fiscal year. So that if and when department head accrues, that is it's capped at that period. You can't say 150 hours this year and 150 next year. So are we good on that then? Because that's certainly, uh, I, I know that's, she's correct in that. Okay. Yeah, if that's what the practice is, that's, that's what, what it yeah. continues to be. Yeah. That's, that, was a, that was set by the select board. Yeah. So that's going to get put somewhere in that section three. Compensatory time, which is 
in my draft is on page 19. 3C. 3C, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it says no more than yeah, three. Yeah, fiscal year, okay. Per, so you're changing that right now. It should be any in a total. You can never, it, it shouldn't say fiscal year. It should say uh, period. Okay. Then on the, the like the next page under section H longevity. You know, that's she brings up a question: should it should it be benefited benefit employee instead of full time? And I don't at the moment know if people who are not working full time but are still benefited. That you know, that's the question. Yeah, I don't know what the practice is. And I, I'm only, at the moment, I can only answer my department. Everybody works is 40 hours a week. So after after the 10 year period, they're, they're entitled to that. Um, you know, it's based on our definition of what full time is. Should it just continue to be what it is? It, it should, yes. I, I but I've got a. I don't have the the way she wrote this up. She didn't. Her, she didn't give us her opinion as to like if she was getting longevity pay and not working thirty five hours. So if we already have employees that are getting longevity pay and are working less than 35, but over 20 because they're benefited, then they should continue to get it. Yep. And then the only other thing, again, I don't know if this was the case, if they were working, if they're getting it and they're working less than 35 hours, then is it a full 250 or is it prorated? That I don't know either. You know, Bobby, I think we have to keep doing what we're doing, but I also so, think it should be prorated if it's but whatever we're doing. So again, she's brought up the point that I don't have an answer to at the moment that we need to get an answer yeah. for. Um, the section on lactation, she. Oh. Um, let's do one section on there where it's in this box where it talks about accommodation. So, this would be under, under break periods. Oh. We have a lactation policy? Presently, I do not believe we did. So I'm not sure what. Well, somewhere when I started this, I printed out the hmm. Did we fill the baby out with the bath water? What's that, Joyce? I said, did we throw the baby out with the bath water? Oh. Yeah. So I think by virtue of creating the policy or adopting one at some point, you have to have a designated area that doesn't necessarily have to now be created as a lactation room. 
but is identified as one that can be accommodated as one if and when the need should arise. Okay. So you sort of, to Joyce's point, you have you have crafting the policy, but you can't, you know, you have the plan, but not the workability for it because you have somebody saying this building has a need, all of a sudden we don't have the accommodation. So maybe I'll try to find the old handbook to see what we had, but they also reference a statute that says what you have to do regarding lactation. Maybe you already know that. So I could look at the statute and see what in the okay. citations right there and see what it says we have to do with them. Yeah, it's probably just the same as like a reasonable accommodation yeah. once you get the request if you don't already have. But your policy sort of already denotes exactly what it should look like and what it should have. You just don't have the actual physical. Yeah, so this is, I'm just going to tell you my broken record on this. It's a recurring theme because we went from a very short, maybe it was the same one that we, when you were here before, or a pretty short personnel handbook to someone who wrote this up for us. Um, they won't be hired, and it's very long for the number of employees that we have, at least in my mind, and also it wasn't necessarily based on town of Waitley, it might have been a combination of copy and paste and other things, so there's a lot, my concern is always that we're creating policies and no one's going to know that we're supposed to be following them or don't follow them, but that's just me being I am things. so glad you said that, because I, you know, yeah. this is my first meeting, but personnel is kind of my thing. Um, you're exactly right. Um, and so what you have is a blurring of what is personnel policies, which you need to tell people about sexual harassment and workplace violence at work, you know, and how do I get my sick leave and how do I get my vacation? And then administrative policies. Like, I need to report on time, what's the cell phone use policy, and things like that. And they've all been lumped together in this one document that makes it really sort of dense and cumbersome. And so, you know, one small thing that just says sick, vacation leave, FMLA, sexual harassment, like, how do I behave at work and everything? And then all these other things um, would make it much more workable. As an pretty tough going. And I mean, all of it's part of having employees and notifying them of their benefits and their rights, but a lot of it is, how do I, what do I need to get through the day when I have a question? Yeah, so in fairness to your excellent predecessor, Brian, he really, this wasn't his job, we paid someone to do it, then he took it on, he was a lawyer, he went through it, he spent a lot of time, he kept saying, but it's part of my job, but really, we hired someone to do it, and it just didn't match up with what was actually happening on the ground, and so that's sort of what, at least from my perspective, that's what we've been kind of grappling But we're getting there, I feel like we are getting there. And I mean, it is, I mean, yeah. Employee rights have really evolved, and you know this is a good policy to have, um, and you know it's something that you need to be aware of. Just like the IT policy that's in here is excellent, and things you wouldn't have. There's no remote work policy that should you know be something that you know you're living now and should be included in here. Things like that, but um, you know the policies are all good. It's just they're all. How do I find out how to get a personal day? It's going to take me 20 minutes. Okay. How do we make sure they're being uniformly yeah. enforced? Yeah, because that's death that's, hell. That's what I wrote a lot throughout. Yeah. This is the uniformly this enforced. Is an enforced. Yeah. But we have made progress. So. Yep. Did you find anything, Betty? It just it said to look at a certain page. Now, this is what it says. Or the act it will be present, so it doesn't say if there's a room or whatever, but yeah. Well, I thought the what was deleted that I see on the side is a looks like a pretty flexible thing, you know, that we're not going to deny any reasonable accommodation if that's our accommodation policy, right? That we don't have to specify what room it is. In this document, you just have to 
Right. I so I'm, I'm not sure why that was deleted back when it was deleted. I might have missed that. That was just towards the beginning. So that might have been the meeting that I missed. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's kind of bad the way it is. Well, I mean, I have... like, it doesn't promise you anything other than let's find a room that's not a bathroom. Right. And it doesn't have to be the same room. You know, one year to the next, it could be a different room as things evolve. Um, so I guess I wonder what do people think about just putting back in the deleted lactation accommodations? Does anybody remember why they were deleted? I don't. Yeah, I have that box. I have that box. We just don't comment on lines. Oh, it's on the side there. Um, I can. It's only a couple sentences. And it says deleted lactation accommodations. The town does not discriminate against employees or applicants based on lactation or the need to express breast milk for a nursing child. The town shall not take adverse action against employees who request or use reasonable accommodations for lactation or breast milk expression. Next paragraph. The town will not deny reasonable accommodations for lactation of or breast milk expression unless they create an undue hardship on the town's programs, enterprise, or business. Reasonable accommodations can include more frequent or longer paid or unpaid breaks and private non-restroom spaces to express breast milk. I mean, that's what got deleted and I'm, I'm not sure why um i guess the undue hardship on the town's programs enterprise or business might be vague so so my suggestion would be we look at the old one compare it to what the statute requires i think trish is right because the laws do change over time I'm not sure that specific one would have and then see if that is still good. I'm not in favor of saying we will comply with Mass General Laws Chapter 62 because it's just of no use to anybody who's reading the policy. But if the if old existing policy complied with the current state of the applicable Mass statute, let's put it back in and then it's easy to access and easy to implement. Okay. All right. The next section was on. Under health insurance, which is section four A. The original copy of the drop one said additional life insurance, vision insurance, and any other coverage can be purchased on an employee pay all basis, which sort of any, when it says any other should include dental, but we could specifically say dental. Yeah, as long as that's the case, is that something the town offers? No. Yes, they, do it through they, the town. There is dental yeah. offered, so we could we could implement we could put the yeah. word dental. Yeah, why not word? It just look like a an innocent employer. Sure. And then under the section where. It, or the original draft section had it highlighted in red where it, when upon retiring. What Lynn is saying is that they must, that is that another section where it says must sign on Medicare Part B? Is that in there? Yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, right.
The only thing that she's offering any different is the single plan wording. But it does say that too. So I'm not quite sure what she's asking for there. Yeah, I think all those points are covered except for the dental. Are we on the um, unemployment insurance one? We were still on the retired, we're still on the health insurance one. retired employees. Um, it would appear that the, the language we have covers what she's asking. You can just confirm that with her. Maybe, maybe we're missing one yep. of the point is, but I think it does cover it in slightly different words. All right, now we can move on to the unemployment insurance. Um, and this is weird because I- because I feel like what she wrote is the same as what we've got. Back right. on the retired and re the retired employees, Joyce? No, we're talking about the unemployment, right? I thought we moved on to the unemployment. And we, yes. Like, the conclusion about the retired employees was yeah, we think it already says that. And can you explain what you would change to make it say that, I guess, or something like that? I feel the same way about the unemployment insurance. I assume we pay into unemployment. No. We're not self-insured. Yes. We're self-insured. Yes. No, we're self-insured. So I think what we've got written is that we're self-insured. The town of Whaley pays the unemployment cost. The state establishes who you know eligibility and how much you have to pay them but we pay the cost there's nothing here that says we pay into the state's unemployment system okay right so i feel like what we had written there is the same as what lynn's comment is but i could be wrong yeah i didn't get that nuance i thought that said we're just like every other private employer who pays its own unemployment, but you're saying that the state sets a separate self-insurance cost for employers who decide to self-insure or do something. No, we do not pay, yeah. period. If you decide to self-insure, yeah, you, you can't self, I mean, you you have to place, pay some unemployment. Um, that's the state law. Um, if you don't want to pay into the state system, you can't like self-insure and then like give people nothing, right? So there's, you still have to pay whatever the state says they deserve for unemployment it's just that you pay it at the time that someone gets laid off if a town rather... employee gets... sorry sorry if a town employee gets laid off for not for bad cause just because the job is discontinued they go to the department of unemployment or whatever it's currently called in massachusetts to file their claim or they or waitley they would file their claim and then waitley would have to start paying that we we do not pick up. My understanding is we pay nothing for unemployment at all until an employee until we lay someone off if they're in, laid off. And then we pay a hundred percent. And then we have to pay. So the state does, is that how it's worked in other towns? Yeah, depending on how long the employee is with us, they they have a look back. So say the employee yes. that was only with us six months and worked for the town of Hatfield before that, then they go to Hatfield. So both. both would yeah. be responsible and that's so there's why nothing that she's saying that's contradictory but i mean i don't think it's value added so much as okay not my statements are true right and that is why in the past a lot of times and a lot of people don't understand it is when a department says we're going to have to do a layoff in many cases you need to lay off two people to equal one person because now so you've got to pay and we never were paying insurance. So now we pay 100% of it. Okay, um, the holiday 
My answer to that, I think, Brenda, didn't we leave it that way because it's what the state law is? Yeah, that's still, the statute. Yeah, that's what the statute is, and we have no right to change it at the moment. I mean, it's just safe ground to go with what the statute says because either way, you might offend people, but that's if I looked at it when I was sitting right. here last time. Until the state changes, then we can address it then. Um, the next section she was questioning was calculating the length of service. And my recollection to this was this came up under the, the police department in the aspect where they had, uh, if you have anybody that's worked for the town for a substantial amount of time and then became full time, that's why it was in there that they could be kept, you could calculate, give them some form of credit working part-time that would be something that i could definitely get ryan to verify but that's how i remember that section we're not get to the end of the question what have we been doing yeah and, and but th that topic definitely came up when we recently had Part-time police officers who had worked had been working for many many years moved into a full-time position. Do you remember that at all, Joyce? Um, not very well. Okay. That would have been like the two new guys we just got. Yes. Correct. I don't know. And were they given any credit of? service for working part-time mm. i have no idea okay again that's something we can get some clarification on they're two really young guys it would not have been a lot of time all right i'm um, on the carryover We should look at the old policy and look what we're yeah. actually doing. Yeah, yeah. Gotta continue to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to read it. All right. Well, we can we can do that just like you said, and bring that make that comparison and. And the sick leave. I agree with her that it needs to be prorated. Yeah, I think prorated makes sense on both of those. Yeah, yes.
And the uh, last thing she had was the termination slash retirement. <laughs> that I gotta, I would defer back to like she was recently involved in that and how was she paid out? If she was paid out prorated, then it needs to say prorated to keep it in line of what we've been doing. Yeah, you need to look at what the old policy says and what we're actually doing and yeah. But she had a combination of full-time and part-time service. Yeah, it can get kind of complicated. So in that case, right? That, right. So in that case you'd have to take the total accumulation of the full time, the part time, and come up with an average, okay. and then, and if you're prorating, are, you, are less than full time people eligible for the sick leave? No, this is for. I mean, the, for the for the being, sick leave. having having okay. your sick time bought out right upon yeah. retirement. So you get one day for every year of service, provided you have. Them. Enough in, in, enough in the bank in your accumulation, yes. But maybe some additional languages there for those cases. Okay. Okay, I'm sure you have yeah. a lot of employees who go back and forth between part time and full. Just want to make sure that we keep it uniform in what we've done. Yeah, and in fairness, it should in be fairness, right? Yeah. Right. So, all right, well. Did anyone else have any comments? Trish, do you want to go over any more specifics on what you pointed out? Um, sure, just maybe some of the big ones, and then I can leave this with you for your midnight meeting. Okay. I didn't do it in the document um, for the of either one of the committee members. Just um, as I said earlier, um, you do reference the employee assistance program, but it's only like a paragraph under the, the drug use policy. And I think, do you have an employee assistance program availability to employees here? It should be part of Maya, it's isn't it? It's part of Maya and through, or through our insurance. Yeah, which is Hampshire yeah. Angel, or Hampshire right. Trust. So um, at some point, I think you want to have that in this document that. Okay. Um, either you know, the discipline policy too or something like that that you know is part of corrective discipline that it, employees the supervisor can um, make the voluntary yeah. and eventually mandatory referral to that um i already mentioned um the um, remote work policy yeah, that's very um, good point. maybe under workers' compensation or something because employees get hurt at work, they still fall under workers' comp. So there's certain work safety rules in the same vein for those who, especially if they're regularly working a scheduled day from home or something. Um, so, and then um, a lot of it was just works smithing, but it was give me a second. Um we talked about personnel records. Do you do performance evaluations for your staff? We have, however, it's it seems like every time that comes to to light, it gets done for a year or two and then afterwards it fades away. Okay. Um the downside is, if, again, this is my opinion, the downside is that unlike a private firm, private business, where they kind of, you can meet with employees and discuss this kind of stuff and then make salary adjustments or hourly rate, weight, rate adjustments, in our case, it's all it's all up above table, so everybody knows what everybody gets, and it makes it very difficult to do something like that because you can't talk in confidence with one employee without the other one knowing. 
And you're also really decentralized here. You have different folks evaluating. You've got four people, someone has one. Mm -hmm. I only say that because the document references performance evaluations several times. And it has so that's been done. That's why asked the yeah. question. Joyce says, I know Joyce has done that on department heads. Just yeah, and, just a, like, like a select board would evaluate Brian. And I remember doing it once or twice, but not recently. He kept getting like straight A's. So, you know. <laughs> That's good. No TA wants to be evaluated because under section nine, where you say um, no information contained in the personnel file shall be released unless written authorization is received. Performance, the town administrator's performance evaluations are public record. So, so they are on our website. Yep. So just under that section, not all of them require written authorization. And some of yeah. them, I think Brenda mentioned earlier, um, where you say, you know, information is confidential in some places, um, it's just going to be really hard to enforce. Um, asking for doctor's notes after four days absences, if someone has the flu or COVID, just, you know, you're not going to get it. So in which case, you know, we say the employee could be disciplined, things like that from a practical point of view might be hard. Um, on page 11, and I don't know what page you have, about eligibility for insurance benefits, um, for those in particular where we go 20 hours or more, it's always good um, because sometimes employees work 18 hours one week and work 24 another week. So sometimes it's good to use a language on average, but the, the statutory threshold for all this stuff is 1,040 hours a week, which is 20 times 50. Right. So sometimes it's good to use both as an indicator. So if you have an employee that well, sometimes works 15 and sometimes during the summer he's working 30, you can go back and just do the total number of hours because then if they hit that 10, 1,040, you're in trouble because you're in the Benny situation. So, um, so sometimes it's good to have the, um, both the language there. Um, under recruitment on page 13, where you list all the factors that um, you'll use under recruitment, uh, D, methods of selection. Um, I just added an eight, which would be test pursuant to state and federal laws. I crossed out the the seven that said pre-employment physical examinations pursuant to state and federal laws and just added an eight, which is tests. I couldn't find a cryptic way to say psychological tests. So I just put pursuant to state and federal regulations that require. Sorry, just, could you just tell me what section you're under? Because my Yeah, it's to, under two recruitment selection yeah. determination, uh, A, three, D number seven. Number seven. And I'm yeah. proposing to strike in the parent uh, pursuant uh -huh. to state and federal and just add eight tests pursuant to state and federal laws because you're required to do um, um, the psych test or the, you know, sometimes driving tests, things like that for different ones. So are you striking the parenthetical or adding the word tests pursuant to state? Yeah, that, the latter. Um, just as a general comment, um, I don't know where it is. Well, why not go in order and then it will be easier. Um, under on page 14, reasons for rejection, which is number six, where the point of authority may reject an applicant who does not possess the minimum qualifications. Um, focusing on does not possess the minimum qualifications. As you know, when you do a job description for required qualifications, there's always a caveat that says, or any equivalent combination of education of experience. So that sentence kind of negates that 
statement that's made in job descriptions when we say does not meet the minimum qualifications because you always say or any equivalent combination. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, again, I'm wordsmithing here, but it's just something you might want to consider. Um, page 17, uh, G, driver's license and driving record verification uh, relative to an employee losing his license to operate a motor vehicle. I think you want to put a time clock if they do that. So I'm suggesting within 48 hours. I toured with 24, but if an employee loses their license, you want them to notify their supervisor right away and there's no time frame in that um, section. I think 48 is good because yeah. it's a Saturday. I mean, let's not get into what's a business day, what's not, but that, is, that makes sense because it should be. I don't know. What is your experience with that, Brian? If someone loses their life, uh, yeah, I, maybe you don't have any. Let's hope you have no. I don't. I have, yeah, I not. I have not had that happen for me. But we have police officers, fire, fire. Yeah. I mean, virtually everybody in the town is driving. Our treasurer's going to the bank, uh, you know. Um, let's leave it at let's put 48 hours. Yeah, I put it, must inform their supervisor within 48 hours of any loss of license or restrictions. Under section H, provision of employee references, um, later in the document, you talk a lot and, and under personnel records about references and what the references say and getting references and obtaining references. But you're preventing anybody providing any reference on any employee under this section by saying you can only provide name, rank, and serial number. And I'm not opposed to that because that's definitely the way it's going to prevent liability. Um, we just have to recognize that we'll get it back in kind. So when we do reference checks for folks, we might just get that same information back and it will be harder. To, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I know the employment lawyers I work, and I know the firm I work for is like, we will confirm that they work there and the dates they work there. And I think that's a private employer. So it's, yeah, I don't know if there's different rules, but I, I... No, we're definitely heading in that direction. It, it's just... In other places in the document, you were really detailed about the reference checking and what we should be trying to ascertain as we vet candidates for recruitment and selection. Um, but in the same vein, you know, just. Yeah, but I'm not saying this is how people get around it, but the way you yeah. deal with it is the employer, the town of Whateley confirms this person worked here from this state to this state and that was their position. Right. But that doesn't stop. Well, I'm not speaking for the time. I'm just saying, no, I know. an individual the person, who you know, works like right. the head of the department for writing a letter of recommendation saying I worked with, if, you know, you know, to help our employees. Yeah. No, and, I get yeah, I yeah. just that's yeah. But you're right. That's the way the yeah. real world is going. That's if you called my law firm and asked if I worked there, they would say she worked in this department for this day, this state, and that's all they would do. Yeah, and I, I think. In the scheme of things, that's the safest way to go yeah. because we're in, in terms of employment liability. The last thing here is K termination of employment. The town reserves the right to terminate employees' employment at any time and for any reason not prohibited by law. Now, under the public sector, every employee has due process rights so that um, they can't be terminated without those due process rights, including having. Uh, a hearing and a public hearing and a louder mill hearing that lets them know why they're being terminated and the reasons for termination and a hearing in public or private session and all those things. So um, I don't really think that this is a statement that rings true in the public domain um, because you can have an at-will employee, but that's still, no matter what, they have the due process rights of progressive discipline um, in terms of being able to cure defects in their performance. Same as a probationary period, where in another place I made a note that if someone's not performing in, during the probationary period, you just can't save them after three months. Sorry, Keith, it's just not working out. 
you have to be able to have shown over those three months that you know, I tried to show you to drive the truck three times, and three times you drove it in the ditch. Right. Um, it used to be probationary period was great, no strings attached, you're gone. But now, like everything else, it's gotten more and more complicated, and we have to show we tried to cure. But I think this this termination of employment is really in the public sector. Your job is considered your property, and. Um, you have to have all those due process and hearing rights. So where can we come up with some language in regards to that due process? So I was with you, but I was still taking notes on the last section. So I yeah. heard you, but I couldn't catch up into what page or what section are you It's in? 18. It's the very last one on section. It's K, termination. K, termination. Right after we, where we just were oh, talking. Okay, about. sorry. Right. It's previously. Me. So I only have a J. Am I? Are you here? Oh, it's the new J. I'm sorry. Oh, J. Oh, J. Okay. She's saying that you know we need to have two processes in that. Instead of that one sentence. Um. Well, you mentioned at the very beginning of the be uh, meeting, I'm assuming this is what you're talking about, though it may not have been when you said something about um, remote and disciplinary process, but no, employee assistance program. Um, so I don't object to more, but sometimes less is more because any reason for, are you saying put a, a termination process right into that section? I just strike the whole thing. Oh, you wouldn't put it out? Just strike it. Well, because it goes without saying, yeah. so it doesn't, yeah. Oh, I'm always for shortening this. So just take K out? Yeah, or just, it's only one sentence. Oh, so that's a new K, so we have different versions. All right. Yeah, that's... Okay. Is that J now? It's, it's J, J online. J. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot in here that kind of goes without saying because of what the law requires. Skipping ahead to 31, just a question. Keep, um, we're talking about vacation and how people request vacation. If you have two people that put the vacation request in for the same week, do you decide by seniority or how do you decide? That is done. Seniority is how then I it should say it in here. Doesn't. All right. Yeah, yeah. And I'll give you this. Okay. So, yeah, that's correct. I should say that. Um, under page unless for some you know sometimes we can accommodate but if there's a reason we can't then it's based on seniority yeah, yes. yeah. it probably doesn't happen a lot because everybody knows by now paid personal leave which is on page 33 um how is it taken can people take 30 minutes can they take an hour how did, what increments do people take their two days of personal leave Definitely vacation is allowed in a, in, a, in an hourly increments, but but uh, their personal days that the personal in. days I usually do it as a whole day, so I it might have run. I don't know how so this is something we might just you have any sense of how people use it in town offices. Um typically just the day. You yeah. don't do it by hours. Um it's typically somebody would just use that unless they took I mean, normally it's half day or full day. I don't think it's anywhere in between that. So this is one of the ones you want to reflect and uh, memorialize the current practice because you do have the small necessities leave for the 30 or an hour one. But what I've seen to creep in in recent years is using your personal leave in an hour or a half hour because it's not legislated someplace other. So we probably want to make clear that it can be taken in full or half day increments. Um, 39 under M, which is unpaid leave. The only thing that I had there is um, for people to take unpaid leave. I don't know if you wanted, again, a time clock. You don't want someone to start working for you 
in two months and then say they need to go on a paid leave. Or maybe you do, I don't know. But sometimes you see language that says um, employees who in good standing who have been in the service of the town for a year may request an unpaid leave or um, or maybe for employees who have uh, satisfactorily completed their probationary period. But I think you want to put some arms around uh, a longevity time for an employee for when they can be eligible. Okay. Otherwise, they can, under this language, they can get it walking in the door. Well, or at least request it. It's still discretionary, but they can still request it. So for full time, it'd be after two weeks at right three. Is that what I'm reading? And yeah. So are you saying like they need to work two months before they can start not accruing but actually collecting sick leave? Or I don't know what the standard is in the industry in the it's pretty industry. much for you to decide. I mean, um it's just really you want to make sure you know, it's great that you're you're granting it under extraordinary circumstances, but I think you it's a it's a benefit to employees and you know who is eligible for benefits. This is an uncommon benefit. So maybe typically we want to consider it's a benefit we're going to give to people who've been in the employ of the town, you know, longer than three months. And and also that they're in good standing, which means you know they haven't used all their sick leave. Or, you know, and all the, you know, whatever. Just something, again, to consider. One or two, three more. Um, under the vehicle use policy, and when people have vehicles um i think that it's on i think it starts on page 44 of my co copy of the town vehicle policy the irs reporting requirements for um employee provided vehicles are pretty stringent so probably a sentence somewhere alluding to the fact that the employee is responsible for reporting uh, or complying with IS, IRS requirements relative to business vehicle usage, or just a line like that should be included. Yeah. And then, And then the last things on page 56 under the employee grievance and dispute resolution. Um, so under I, you list what are typically valid complaints and under E, examples of those complaints include discrimination basis of uh, race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, uh, gender identity, any kind of sexual harassment, harassment claim, complaint needs to be reported immediately. And this complaint procedure or dispute resolution is not the vehicle for which to do it. It should be under your separate sexual harassment policy because any kind of um, harassment complaint has a time clock associated with the day you first found out about it. So going through this procedure would really having them go to the supervisor and then the department head. So some language to the effect that um, because you have those, in, I realize that's out of, out of, out of, under the language right under, out of the statute under E, but to make that more generalized, maybe you just pull it out because anything to do with that kind of harassment has to immediately go to the reporting officer. And, and sorry, my pages are again are so different than your it's, can you just B, it's B employee grievance and dispute resolution letter. Uh, oh, is, is that it, a one? Is it so I guess it's a one discipline under under E grievance dispute resolution. Keep going with the fifty 
Oh, there, I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so for me, that's 48. Yeah, they're just yeah. Okay. getting farther apart. I think because we've had so many versions, yeah. and so when I printed this, maybe I didn't print every track changes prior version, so anyway, okay. And then the last thing, again, related to the, the, the paragraphs in that general section B, when um, someone has a grievance or a dispute, it says go to the department head supervisor, then go to the department head, and then go to the appointing authority, the town administrator. So we have to have some language if the complaint involves one, the supervisor, or two, the department head. So who would then be the complaint if first directed to in the event that it is the supervisor or the department head? And I'm assuming they go right to the appointing authority or the order TA, the but you need language, you need language to that effect. Okay. But and, would, so would it that section E about more or less when it talks about the complaints of discrimination is is that already included in our sexual yes, it is. section? So it, in the appendix where you have the harassment policy, it is. So if we just strike the section E is what you were thinking? Well, there's some other things you need to include in there. I'm just saying take out the ones that relate to your harassment policy and all right, okay. Gender discrimination and the other things. So, you know, the, the underlying intent there is that stuff needs to be addressed immediately, not through a sort of I filed this complaint and I sort of told you and then you right. had a chat with me and then I mentioned it to the chair. A week goes by. It, yeah. And then I'll just step in. Those are the things. Do you have any comments on any of the? I didn't have a chance okay. to go through. Okay. I mean, I I feel we still we still need to work, read, continue to read through them. I need to read through them again myself. If it's there's an awful lot in there. It hasn't gone up in the department heads yet. Um, so I, I feel we're at the point where. We might as well get it out to the department and so that everybody can start to critique it again as well before we move for a final. Yeah, I I completely agree with that. At, at our first meeting, I think I just gave Brian my markup because it felt like it would be too nitpicky to go through every little stupid bad citation thing. And I kept a copy of it, but that's kind of almost irrelevant now because we've gone so many steps since then. But most of my comments were, besides bad citation, circling a section and saying, are we actually doing this? Because it just felt like for a town with this number of employees, this was adapted from a much... Uh, we, we longer, yeah, so I would like to do that one more time, um, just amongst us. And it won't be as bad as it was the first time. And I think all the nitpicky citations have been cleaned up. So that's one thing that I'd say I'm willing to do when you're going to have to really be the one who answers it for as much as you can tell, because who knows what the other departments are doing, but um, at least we've winnowed in on it. And the other thing I want to say is you're right. Last time I did look up the statute and Massachusetts statute suit. I just want you guys to all remind me to follow up and it does still say Columbus Day, not Indigenous Peoples Day, but a bunch of our neighbors like Surprise, surprise, Amherst and others have taken individual votes changed to Indigenous Indigenous Peoples Day, but the statute still says Columbus, as far as I can tell. I'm pretty sure Waitley isn't one of the communities that has voted to change it, but I, I could be looking at an old copy of the statute. So don't let me, because I don't want to stick in Columbus if we if, if the state has actually changed it. doesn't look to me like they have when I look at the statute online. That's those are my comments. All right, well, then basing on that, um, I would recommend that we, at this point in time, send that draft policy out to the department heads and continue to review it, and we'll continue to discuss at our subsequent meetings. Okay. All right, the next item on the agenda is to review and discuss the first draft of the 
FY24 salary certainly. Shouldn't it be FY25 or? Yeah. Yes, no, this is the current, that's the current number. Yeah, that's the current. Um, or we're looking at going into 20 months. Yes. That's the current, right. Yep. Can we just stuff that last meeting? I didn't make copies of the um, salary survey that I gave you guys last meeting. Um, so I don't know. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess at this point in time, we need to, we can go down through the list on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, certainly the town administrator position, in the fact that it's, in the fact that it's being advertised. I don't know how the select board, you know, the, the three member committee came up with Joyce, do you know how that range was, how it's being advertised came up? Uh, no, I do not, I do not happen to know. Um, so, I mean, at the moment, since it's most likely gonna be a contract negotiation anyways, I don't think we need to do anything with the town administrator. Fine. Anybody else agree with that? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, on the administrative assistant, um, I know that Brian had written a letter. I don't I don't have it here to address an additional uh, responsibilities. Do you know I'm getting any you know? I have it in my office. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I feel we should have that. We should look and at do it. Do you want to discuss it now? I don't. Be good. I think we should. Regarding we should. the administrative position. Yeah. 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 Now is the middle. No, might as well. Because we need to not get to. Thanks, Jess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just so everybody here knows that that position has had additional responsibilities. I don't know to what level, but I'm assuming that I haven't read the letter. I just know there's that letter from Brian had drafted. Yeah, my understanding on day two is that um, the administrative assistant to the select board and the ministries taking on a number of additional responsibilities. And um, the pay rate is not comparable to similar positions in surrounding communities. And Brian, as his last act, asked that uh, that rate be reviewed and increased. Jess, would you mind making copies of this for everybody? Sorry, guys, I really want to read it to him. Well, then we can keep it with us. Sure, that, yeah. no. Okay, well then, Jess is taking minutes. Let's just wait a second until she gets back. Well, how was day? Were you, were you on vacation? So you didn't actually start when day one I'm started? always on vacation. I'm retired. <laughs> But um, I went to LA last week for the first time oh, ever. Nice. And uh, I wasn't checking up on you, so I wanted to. <laughs> so I was here to pick up my materials, and he knows you, and he said, "Yeah, she's not here." Yeah, I came back on the red eye. Oh, where were you? At LA, Santa Monica. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, not a good time to go. The weekend before the Oscars. Oh, oh kind yeah. of crazy. But Were you impacted by the rain that was happening out there? Uh, it rained like buckets the first day we were there, but um, 
it, it was nice the other day. So, yeah, yeah. I had never ever been, and my friend was at a conference in San Francisco, and she said, I know you've never been. I'll fly down to meet me. So I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The one question I have is would these would this additional workload be permanent? Does it say that in here? I don't think it's this this is the first time I, I saw this moment today. So okay. um I think when I spoke to Brian, this was for the interim. Okay. And for when we hire uh, a permanent person to get them up to speed pretty much. So I don't think it's permanent. I, I don't know the time. That wasn't really discussed too much. Have you in, done anything in changing with the amount of hours you work? Nope. I am currently 24 hours under the admin position. I also and the assistant town clerk, but that's five mean, hours. That's a separate, right? That's a separate, separate right. idea. So I, I already knew everything that you said that is great about you in here, but I'm just questioning how uncomfortable it might be for yeah. you to be sitting here while we talk about, I know it's a position, it's not you and you have elevated the position and all of that, but I just not sure protocol about talking about it in front of poor Jess while we sit here. Yeah. I don't, I feel, I don't feel uncomfortable. Okay. Um, I, like I said, Brian and I had very much briefly discussed this. This was a minute conversation. Um, a week before I think we sent this email. So um, I don't really know what his thought process was. I, the kind words were very, very kind. Um, but I don't really have much of a, a say. So, or, or an, an opinion right, other than um, I, I agree with him that I, I should get a raise. So. How much? This is a general comment, not just for this position. How much do we consider that the person in a position may be going above and beyond? Or, or are we setting setting the, the salary for the position kind of regardless of who's in it? Yeah, so I don't, I, this is all a little bit awkward for me, yeah. notwithstanding your gracious words, because this is my first year on the personnel committee where God, this has been already, it just, I, I'm not even sure what our role in reviewing the salaries is today. Maybe you could help that was me with that. Um, well, to answer your, that general question, usually what we try to do is, it's been our goal, so to speak, just to make sure that, that our employees more or less stay in, in the middle, so to speak. And so when we look at what the actual median is, and if and if the position is like drastically below the the average, then we have done to bring them up to that average. And so if you look at that last column, if there was a position that's six or eight or ten percent, we usually say let's bring that position up to up to and make an adjustment. And that is before anything happens with the COLA, the cost of living adjustment. If in this case, um, you know, it's already listed as 11% above is where it's presently listed. And that's why I'm wondering if, if we're in the position where this is a temporary additional responsibility and, and whether it should be some type of temporary adjustment some other way other than a dot, I don't know. It's... So other than Jessica specifically, is our goal here today to make a recommendation to the select board about what we think new pays, not counting COLA, but new base pay should be? Yes. And every time a new employee comes in, isn't it the watered down version of a new town administrator that you 
you kind of pay based on experience, or is that not the case? To some extent. Yeah, to some right, to some extent. Again, it, what it comes down to, and the way the reason this has been done this way is, um, it's just to try to keep our positions comparable to the towns that we choose for our selection. Assuming the responsibilities of the position are comparable. Uh, right, and that's sometimes very difficult, and that makes, you know, that makes it difficult because the town clerk in one town may have a little bit more responsibilities than the town clerk in another town. Um, and we sometimes will have an individual employee come in and point those kinds of things out and say, well, the reason I feel I'm entitled to more is because I'm doing this, whereas those towns you're comparing aren't doing that. And we'll take it on a case by case basis. If we're talking about, sorry, if we're talking about temporary additional responsibilities, keep in mind the budget that we're talking about now doesn't go into effect until July 1st, at which point hopefully the you know, administrator position is filled. We should be thinking, what would, should we be thinking, what will be the responsibilities of this person as of July 1st? We can then talk about is there anything we can do in the interim to make her whole for doing extra work? But if the extra work will have gone away by the time this budget comes into effect, we should know that. Yeah, I'm I, I I'm a little cautious about wanting to increase the pay rate to to that two or three dollars, which would then make it even higher, and then have the trickle down effect where someone else that might be working in this building feels slighted and says, well, I'm, I'm doing a great job too. And yet I'm still only at 5% over. Now you've just made this person 20%. Um, I don't know. The other thing that I'm debating with myself is is it relevant that the same person is serving the role of the administrative assistant and the assistant town clerk? So the same skills and experience, if we're talking about the person rather than the roles, um, with two fairly different compensations. Yeah. I'm not saying we should cut the pay for the assistant town clerk, but believe me, that's not where I am. But okay, if she has X number of hours in the day, is it more in her favor? And I'm talking about her in general. Yeah, not that Jess would do this, mm -hmm. to spend more time doing town clerk stuff because she gets paid more. Yeah, I mean, there that is a huge disparity of 22 versus 26. Almost $4. I think that the hours are pretty set, though, when she's the five hours are full in that office. Okay. She's not bifurcating them, but. Um, so we're in the middle of budget right now, getting ready for town meeting, which I've never done here, and Lynn hasn't done for a while. Um, so the level of expertise, I think, uh, and experience um, required to do that and sort of pick, put the fingers in the dike while during this interim period, I think is, is fairly important. Um, I don't know Jess, so I don't have a... a, a, a a person in the fight here, but um, I think it's really important that we maintain the consistency in the select board and the town administrator office during this interim time, and that when the new town administrator comes in, um, that role is going to be so critical to he or she or they when they come in, um, that um, which is admittedly an interim time frame for this recognition of a higher level of um, duties arguably um typically like for the select board meeting tomorrow night brian would send the packet and combine it directly to the select board just did that to me today because i was getting ready for this meeting you know and i couldn't figure out how to do all that today um so so little things like that that are just over and above so um not knowing the pay range ranges or anything keith or whatever but um, based on Brian's recommendation and the fact that um, it's for a short-term period of time, um, 
you know, I think it's worth considering to your point, it is the position, not the person, but also in that same vein, when someone is taking on um, extra duties of a higher level requiring additional responsibility, um, I think that merits additional consideration. You're always gonna have the issue that Keith alludes to um, about equity among staff. It's so much harder in a, a town like this, but um, you know, the most organizational history we have right now is with Jess and, and Lynn, and Lynn's here two days. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's important to consider, especially as we do the warrant and, and things like that um, for the next at least four months. And um, and it's unforeseen, so um, it would be like a reserve fund, mostly, I guess, the select board will return that under this fiscal year. As opposed to next fiscal year, right, right, because yeah. you're you're making a case for this fiscal year. Yes. The one thing that I would add to that is, will just have additional responsibilities regarding onboarding and you know, doing more for the new town administrator to get them up to speed. Because I understand you and Lynn both turn into pumpkins on June thirtieth. I certainly do. And I <laughs> um. That's a hard question to answer because we don't know who that person will be. Right. Um, it's possible it would be a very easy and quick transition. Um, if not, I mean, you know, maybe it's something to revisit once we know who that person will be. Certainly, if that person's not starting July 1, um, <laughs> then that's an answer right there that Jess will become quite vital. Um, but... Uh, you know, certainly I can only speak to the next 30 days. So, yeah. So what are our options here? Because can we request extra funding until the new budget kicks in? Because clearly there's more responsibilities now. Well, we would, we would make that recommendation to the select board and then that's there. That's the select right. board's Right, but does that have to be voted on since it's impacting the budget? Does that have to be voted on by a special town meeting or anything? I think reserves is right. That it would it's, it's a temporary kind okay. of special okay. situation, but how about finance committee since I'm on that reading group? Right. And I happen to have a good sense of how it will be received there. <laughs> does it have to go through them or not? Yes. Because it's reserve yeah. money, right? What yeah, the reserve fund transfer. Like the finance committee. Correct. Right. Who ultimately votes it? Select board. Select board votes it and passes on to finance. Oh, select board votes it before it comes to us. Yes. It's the department that has the, so if assessors have an issue, they, they would do it and goes to finance or whatever. No, I feel everyone here should be paid more. I mean, I've said that all along, which is why they're about to kick me off the finance committee, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, I agree with you when I see, what do I see, 11% and 25% right. over the other towns. That's that's yeah. a lot. And you're going to have a hard time getting certain people to see with those percentages there. And, and I might even be one of them, given that I think everyone's underpaid. But also, we don't want to lose anyone who's taking on extra responsibilities and in all likelihood will continue to have to take on extra responsibilities after you and Lynn leave. But so I'm on both sides of the fence. I really don't know where I come down. On. I I probably would agree with that. Just knowing how things seem to work, that going forward, once she takes on that responsibility, it's not likely that she'll be able to wash her hands of it. She will probably continue with it into the next with the next town administrator. She'll probably. I guess I'd like to know a little bit, but Joyce, what your thoughts are on on this since you're, you know, from a select board standpoint. You're muted, Joyce. Thanks. Um, I am still kind of trying to wrap my head around the, the whole thing. Is this really a temporary pay bump or, I mean, for the kind of, like you, the example that that Trisha gave a moment ago, um, seems like that's something that a, the new town administrator 
will take on. You know, they're, that if this is really a transitory thing, then, and that, you know, the responsibilities aren't going to be maintained, then we handle it differently. It's not a matter of changing the rate for the position. It's a matter of coming up with a stipend or stipend might not be the right word, but um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, compensation for this. And I don't know if it really comes in terms of extra hours because there's it's really extra work. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I'm trying to figure that because it, you know, it the hard thing to do, the hard thing is to justify to a finance committee um, somebody that's already above, you know, the average that we normally compare to. Um, we would need, and I think in the past we sometimes an employee will will go get the information. Um, how their job is actually kind of different from, say, the people who have the jobs that are kind of in the lower end of our our average and why they're really ought to be in the upper end. And I don't really know how to get that information for administrative assistance because um, uh, I bet that job varies a lot from place to place. Um, but I think the the interesting thing to me is that if it's a if this is really a temporary thing, it doesn't really have to go to the finance committee in the same way, right? It's uh, it's something where we're recognizing extra responsibilities and duties, and we we figure out a way to compensate this person. And then, if that duties and responsibilities go down after we transition to what I hope, who I hope will be a, like some really awesome new town administrator that will, I don't know, salve the wound of losing Brian. <laughs> uh, um, you know, that, that, then that, you know, it, I, I feel like I don't really know which way to treat it because I know, you know, you get a bump and then that bump goes away and you're not going to feel good about that either. So. I feel like I'm just blathering on here. No, no, that would be helpful. I, I don't think there's an easy answer, right? And I can definitely be persuaded, but I guess my instinct is, um, you know, if she's able to do as much as she can in the designated hours and not be, feel totally taken advantage of, every employee on this list, even though I'm happy to see Whitley in such a good percentage relative to other towns, very hard to compare what other employees are doing in the same position in other towns, as everyone has said. I guess I'm inclined to keep it on the table for now, but of course that's not my call. That's just my gut reaction is that like having, we don't have to go to finance it's gonna be so good, but um, seeing 25% over and 11% over the other towns, yeah, I, I guess I feel like we're in the ballpark and maybe we don't have to decide it on a sort of interim emergency basis, but I haven't been here long enough to know what protocol is. This is on the agenda for tomorrow night. To for the select board, okay. I I'm sort of inclined that um, I'll use that word that you use, Joyce, the stipend that she perhaps be looked at to be compensated for the additional work that she, labor that she, you know knowledge and things that she's having to put forward and responsibilities, and then if if it continues that way, well then maybe the job description needs to be looked at going forward and make an adjustment going forward. But for right now, maybe we wait and see what the select board does. Yeah, I agree. We don't have to resolve this, which is the 25 budget tonight. tonight. Um, the more pressing matter is, is there an interrupt site? Right. And that's that's important. right, exactly. More important it'll be is between now and the new town administrator. Is approving six additional hours, three and three in each 
Well, or is that not I don't think she. Be, I don't think there's needs to be more hours in the assistant yeah. the clerk, does it? No, it's just in the, um, okay. yeah, in her position as the administrative assistant. That's a good point. If her responsibilities have increased, do her hours need to increase? Can she do the old job and the additional tasks within the twenty-four hours? Well, we can ask if she's here. But she do we, ask. yeah, do we, is she in a feeling where she can take on working additional hours? Is that, I don't want to tell her, oh, that's the only way you're going to get paid when she then says, well, I really can't work more hours. I, I don't know. I'm not sort of weighing this in my mind. That if she increases hours at the current rate in order to get the work done, her weekly pay goes up. Right. If she gets the additional work done within the scheduled 24 hours, then should she be compensated for the extra work? That's the catch catch all because maybe she has she can be much more um, efficient. On the task compared to uh, previous, right. and we should recognize that. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I think that um, I mean some of this will eventually be um, kind of taken care of by like the oh, I'm trying to what's the name of the thing? Not a salary survey. Um, weren't we? Wage and yeah. classification? Yeah, the classification work that's going on. And this is the last year we have to do this problematic comparison to other towns thing. And I think a classification system would benefit somebody who's uh, like really doing well on their job and taking on more responsibilities and so on. A classification system would help um, and it would help differentiate between someone who's been doing a job for a couple of years and is therefore really efficient and good at it, as opposed to a new person who might still be training. Um, so I guess I, I just put again that this is uh, something that may we may be on the way to solving with uh, with that classification study or survey. I don't remember which is the right word for that. I, I guess to sum up my thoughts is that she should perhaps be offered more hours in the interim as that additional workload. And then see what think, happens. I think everybody gets that, that there's additional workload and and that more hours is the the logical way to respond to that. But um that's I mean, maybe that's taking the easy way out. <laughs> We want to ask her that question of the hours, the hours needed to perform the function. Sort of how I think it, you know. Well, it might be more palatable to some of the conservative financial people. Than yeah. If, that, if hours are changing, but the salary is not, does that have to go to my yeah, I think it would. See, that's and I think the finance committee would, yeah. would definitely balk at uh, very disparate all that one. That's what we were wondering is would you for the additional workload have issues as far as taking on more hours to or do you feel that that is not appropriate for you. Uh, what are we talking about more hours? Like, do you have an idea in terms of hours or like, would it be like up to 40? Would it be, would it just be? We, have, we, we didn't want to, I wanted to ask you because if you were in a position where you say, I, I can't work any more hours, I have other commitments. Yeah. Um, I, I feel as though I, I have hours to yeah, so there are spare hours of my time where okay. I have that so, option. See, what we're also wondering is, will any of these additional responsibilities that you're 
being forced or not forced, being asked up to do now. Will they continue when the new town administrator comes on? Will how much of that will remain yours? responsibility and how much of it will be taken back on by the town administrator i think the plan is to have the town administrator take what was take the load from me i think right now i'm just here as not a buffer but as support until we can get somebody right. up to speed so, so it's more of a temporary yes situation which is why we're looking at trying to think of a way of doing a temporary so for the time being, if we increase the workload in hours, then we can yes. revert back at a later time. We're also knowing how the, the, the finance committee looks at things and when we make a recommendation that changes the hourly rate from where they're already gonna look at and say where it is already percentage wise, They've got to agree with that too. Yes. And that is not always easy. We know and so I, I'm feeling like we need to increase your hours. And then that's where we're back at that square one as far as deciding how many additional hours per week. Now would you just be increasing my hours with no pay adjustment? That's that's what we're discussing at yes. the moment. Yes. Okay, I just want to be the yeah, answer. You know, the, this again, the scenario that we're looking at is when on, on the, when we base our looking at the numbers, it's 11.16% above the, the actual median in the towns that we're comparing to. And that's what the finance committee also is going to look at. And so if we increase that, like what Brian is saying, two to three dollars an hour, that that percentage above goes way, way up. Mm -hmm. And then we also have to then look at the how that the trickle down effect on then what does the other employees all of a sudden looking at saying well I'm you know then they're going to start to feel I think we're much safer to say let's give you more hours. The original job description has twenty four hours to get to get the work done. Correct. With the added responsibilities, how many hours are you actually working or do you think you'll need to get the, that additional work done to? I think it truly, I don't think it would be, I wouldn't need more than five hours to truly feel like I'm, I'm not extending myself. You know, right now at 24 hours with what I have on my plate, along with um, the finance, the personnel, the, I'm also the community preservation um, with all of those things and the fiscal town clerk, I do feel like my plate is slightly not overwhelmed, but with the hours for the admin, the 24, for what I have on my plate, it seems it's a little full for 24 hours. So I'm not opposed to having more hours for that position. So in using your number, just to do the math, if we 20, if we went from 24 to 29, plus the five hours as assistant town clerk, that's a 34 hour week, which is realistic. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. We're not now talking about a 50 hour week. Um, from a budget impact standpoint, and again, I'm just arbitrarily using your number of five to get a sense of what we're talking about. $113 a week, something like $113. You're faster than I am. Well, it's not going to, uh, would those five hours, some of them be for the? No, this. Only for your 24, we go to 29. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 so we're talking 130. I also, I don't know what the plan is for the um, permanent TA. And if we're looking to get somebody as qualified as Brian is. But I wouldn't be opposed to continuing, continually, or having having those additional responsibilities going forward, right. and having the TA come on and I still be that support 
in some capacity. And that's where the job description perhaps changes yeah. would take place, which then we can document an increase in an hourly yeah. rate much easier. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of unknown right now. It's, you know, I think that it's definitely. And also, think about. Susan had made the comment that a lot of what we need to try to talk about right now is current fiscal year, whereas yeah. this is not until July 1st effect. So um, tomorrow night, obviously, the select board will discuss this because it's on their agenda too, but um, I'd be inclined to then think our board, we should at least make a recommendation on an increase in hours for the interim time frame. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, does okay. anyone here to make a specific motion? Uh, one might have to wordsmith it for me, <laughs> but I do it. I move that Jessica's, well, I'm sorry, now that, yeah, just well, just the position, the position of administrative assistant who is filling in in our temporary town administrative position and with a lot of extra duties that she be uh, that the position be awarded an additional five hours a week through the end of the fiscal year so from 24 hours a week to 29 hours a week Sorry. I'll second okay. that I have a motion made and seconded before we vote on this if that comes to pass, is that acceptable to you? I hate for us to accept right. something that right. wasn't acceptable. Because yeah, now okay. now we're talking about you a person versus yes. I mean, up until now we're talking about a position. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. It is acceptable. I, I think be, being at 29 hours would definitely be beneficial to all of us, including myself, to give myself some more time. Okay. And we can the end of the year, the then we can revisit yeah. it in a more comfortable way. Right. Right. Hopefully more. It sounds like we have a bigger discussion of once we all the pieces are in place, revisiting your job description and then setting the salary, any salary adjustments based on an adjusted yes. job description. And like we can't direction to go that way. I think that is the right move. And I, I do agree with that. Okay. okay. All in right. That, in that case, thank you. I'm sorry. So, so we have a motion made and seconded to increase the position of the administrative assistant from five hours. 29 hours per week in second. I'll do a roll call vote. There is, first of all, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. Brenda? Aye. And myself? Aye. Okay, that passes your name. Thank you. So the next step is that goes to the select board tomorrow night? The select board will have to take our recommendation and act upon that. All right, so now we'll go back to the, to the regular list. And um, so Brenda, you had asked the question, do you understand basically what, what we do with this, how we're, you know, we look at the positions, if any of them are drastically below the median, average the actual median we try to make we vote on whether we would make a recommendation to bring it back to average yes i do understand that thank okay. you um so as we work our way down the list the, the first position that comes up under is the library Library director. I was just going to say. Oh, the planning looks like it. Library director at minus 4.66. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 4.66. Library director. We know if that's explained by hours or demands or any of that kind of things. So the wait the library director works less than other towns, or is that what we're comparing it to the other town, the median of the other town? Correct. I do not 
you know. Well, it's an hourly rate, so that wouldn't really matter. Right. It's, yeah. okay. it's an hourly rate, right? Okay. And again, this is a position where we, I believe, in the past have um, actually let the library trustees right make yes. that yes yes that's not enough. because yeah. because it's where um, we can provide this information to the library trustees and then they can make that yeah you're right decision for their budget. Um, the only comment I'll, I'll make about, you know, in the position of the uh, highway superintendent is that the, the policy that the select board took on when they gave the highway superintendent the additional role of being the building superintendent is that they do the 8% um, over the average median, okay. which is... Do you remember that, Joyce, how that was? Yeah, I remember making that calculation. Right, so it's, so just basing it, keeping it in line with what has been done in the past, that was just go. needed to be an adjusted to 8% over. Yeah. Okay, so the next ones that are definitely under is the um, operator labor. Um, You're closest to that. What's your sense on that? The, you know, again, one of the things that I pointed out last last meeting was and there's a current opening posted right now in the town of Hatfield, and um, they're at they're at their range of twenty six fifty eight to twenty nine oh six is what is being offered. Um, it's a scenario where towns are having a very difficult time in getting applicants that have not only the CDL license but the hoisting license that goes along with it. Um, I spoke to. Um, Bob Karish from Karish Oil, and he told me he pays his driver. He, all of his drivers are making thirty dollars an hour or more, and in their case, they only need a CDL license. They don't even need a hoisting license. So, um, when I look at other towns around, I'm seeing many of them struggling to obtain drivers. I think it was. Yeah, it was Coleraine. Coleraine or Charlemont recently had to go to their town meeting and transfer money out of their salary account to hire a private contractor to work this winter because they can't get anyone to come work for them and drive the trucks. Um, so it's becoming um, a challenge. And um, you know, I sort of did some some rough numbers in my own mind, and I feel that um, I came up with um, for the the low end. I came up with a twenty seven oh eight oh eight. That's that's medium actual. Yeah. Okay. And so if we actually come up to that and we go with that 2708, the other thing that the town of Waitley has presently is we offer, after you've worked three years as an operator of labor, you get a little bit more, which was, um, that's an additional 3%. And that is so that if once you started to, um, become more familiar with the ins and outs of the job, you are recognized and got a little bit more than someone who is just coming in off the street. So is the 24.94 listed here the starting rate or the average of people at that rate and people who've been here three years to get the bump? That is the bottom. 
the 2494 is currently the bottom. Right now, I I have a 2494, and then the other employee who has is in that one is over three years. He's making 2576. So that's that is a three for three point three percent difference between the two of them. And so that's why I would recommend that we go with the 2708 for the for the an entry level, which is at the median actual. And then anybody in the three plus would be at 2798, which is that same percentage that we've been working with now. And then the subsequent thing with the senior operator, um, presently there's a 13.11% between the entry level and the senior operator. Oh, okay. And I would recommend keeping that same percentage. So the three numbers that I came up with is 2708 for entry, 2798 for the three years plus and the senior operator at thirty dollars and sixty cents. Those are the numbers I came up with. Yeah, it's interesting that on here the median for the senior is actually lower than the median for the operator. And see, one of the things that skews that a little bit is um in this case, we don't call our senior operator a foreman and yet it's a little bit of that responsibility as as a senior operator to be in charge in my absence um, whereas some communities have a full-fledged foreman Waitley does not and so we used to have a position there was no there was no senior operator it was just a foreman and then the town chose to eliminate that position and call it a senior operator because it's not a true foreman position they're not always taking a, another crew and going and so um, it needs to be recognized in the aspect that it does have additional responsibility, but not the full amount of responsibility that a foreman would have. I'm fine with your recommendation. I just am making the note that senior on here, senior operator is going to look like more of a jump over the median but we can't have the senior operator making less so my issue is not with what your recommendation is is with the senior operator the way it's listed on here having a lower salary we shouldn't be judging against that we should be judging in my mind against what we're looking at for the regular operator oh. above that yes and again, the only explanation I can say is that in this case, when you look at these positions on here that are looking at the senior operator, I guarantee you they're not taking into any account of being in a responsible, you know, in a somewhat of a foreman role in my absence. there would be a whole nother section of when you look at the ERCOG study there'll be a whole nother section on any towns that have formants um, because there's more towns with the operator, it's like it just doesn't make sense mathematically that the senior operator is coming out of the low and I think we have to kind of dismiss that. I'm good with your numbers as well. Okay. Um... Did we, since the other one we 
do we need to make, I can't remember, do we need to make a, a vote on each one of these? We well, didn't. Yeah. Since we've been kind of going by consensus as we go along, it might be one vote at the end. Vote at but, the end. Oh, um, uh, but I, I'm speech. certainly open to voting as we go along. We, I, I mean, I feel we can just do one vote at the end as long as no one has a specific issue as we, on one, I don't want to make it a yes or no. Well, is it specific enough for you taking notes, Jess, on like we just went through three statuses yeah. and three new numbers, which, yeah, yeah, okay. you, you have it clearly. Yeah, okay. like we have and we'll just do the yeah. one vote at the end then. Okay, thank you. The next one that's really out of skew is the fire chief. Um, and again, that is a brand new new position that just started last year. Um, that, those numbers are, we, we have a few of them that are, um, that just you have highlighted in the blue because they definitely are full time. Yes. And they're not counted in um, like the little uh, numbers over here, so. I don't think Brian included those in like the meeting uh, where he did. Okay. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, those aren't included. So whatever's highlighted in blue is not um included in the actual event. My bad. I'm yeah, he's I, not, I he's, came I came across I'm looking yeah, at the I know. Paper. Yeah, kind of I'm yeah. these are the, yeah, the font down. of this is small. Right. It's the labor. I think the fire chief is good. Yes, it is now. It's oh. the labor that's twenty eight yeah, okay. percent below. Okay. So the fire the fire chief should be high. Yes. If right. that was agreed upon. Yeah. And uh, sorry, I thought you it's were just the way I drove like my eyes came across the page. Yeah. So, so I, it's I, a I labor position, it's minus 28%. And again, that is a part-time position. Um very it's not a common position that ever ever gets filled. Um so even it probably wouldn't hurt for us to to bring it up to the um, to the actual median, and there may be some years where it, it won't even impact the budget at all because it, most likely, if I'm hiring anybody, it would be a part time operator, not a part time laborer. That makes sense to me. That's fine. Okay. All right. So then, police chief, that's a contractual. Yeah. So that would be up between him and the, I don't know where his contract is and how it's written. I think it's another year or two away. It's three okay. years at a time. The full time police is about 1% under. Shouldn't we bring that up to the meeting? We can do that. Well, yep, to keep it in line with what and you sure. kind of uniform. Yep, yes. Okay, so then that would go to that median. Um, now, the one comment I'll make you know, we don't have any numbers, good numbers to work with with the water superintendent, but. One of the things that happened last year is after town meeting, the the water commissioners took it upon themselves to increase the water superintendent position to the point where he's like the highest town official in the town. And there's some questions as to how the funding is even going to work out on it. It's another scenario where we don't have any control over what goes on, but he's presently one of the highest paid officials, department heads in this town, and will be making more money than most likely even the town administrator will be, which just doesn't seem right. But that's, again, that's a choice that the water commissioners have made. But anyways, I just wanted to point that out. That 
we may have a, in a roundabout way, I sort of think a town administrator coming in and looking at what other employees are being paid in this town may question the range that they're being offered and say, why should I take this job when my buy more responsibilities than some of your other employees and yet you're paying them more than me. Is that an issue with the finance committee or the stock board? And we cannot address from what you're saying here. Right. Um, I mean, no, and the finance committee addresses it. I mean, yeah, who does the water commissioners? Well, roll up to you know, what ended up happening is they're operating without town meeting funding. So I don't know where it's going to end. Okay. So if it doesn't go before town meeting, then it wouldn't be a select board issue either. Okay. Well, it, um, it technically does go before town meeting. Uh, it's just that their funds are not their um, direct. Their their operating funds day to day uh, are not coming from our property taxes. Are coming from their fees. Now, it wouldn't be completely true to say that they they don't ever spend any taxpayer money because there is. There, you know, there were the loans, there were various examples of things where the water system, especially when they were first getting started, was not <laughs> self-funded. But we moved to a point where it is mostly self-funded at this point. But because of uh, idiosyncrasies in the law, we do put their budget on town meeting and it gets voted on there. Yeah, and these changes were made after the town meeting. That's that's the problem. Yeah. So I don't. Let's. We don't have any. There's no comparison there, other than you're trying to compare up and down the column. Yeah, I, I don't. That's just, again, it's, should, it's something that some, like especially a new town administrator, may look at and say, "Why, why are you offering me less money than what other department heads are getting?" So. Anyways, yep. uh, the next one that is definitely below average was the custodian. So to me, 62 cents an hour, and we're having an idea that we're trying to bring all of our payments to medium. So unless there's a reason not to treat it uniformly, I would say for 62 cents an hour, unless there's some reason that I don't know about that that somehow ends up not being equitable, it seems equitable. I feel it is. Everybody satisfied okay with that one? Yeah, yeah. And is there any any of the other any of the other ones that anybody wants to discuss? Okay, then if not then I guess I'll entertain a motion to make a the adjustment as a whole unit. Can it be done as may I make a motion that we adjust these as as noted? Or do we have to go through them one by one? I think to bring everything to the median and maybe read off the three that are different than bringing it to the okay. medium, because it's a specific dollar amount that was because we we're okay. slightly different, yeah. don't you think? So okay. we could okay. read those three, the 2708, the 2798, and the 3060, if I heard your numbers yep. correctly. But you want me to try you, and do that? Yeah. But yep. Can you make a motion? Or do you not want to make that motion? I, I don't know if I have I, your I, title. I, 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 as right. chair, I mean, I, I have that option. But I want to make sure I get the oh, title. The highway right. superintendent. Yeah, I would. So highway superintendent abstain. Abstain from that. Anything. So we yeah, have the so motion. We may want to make the motion if you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I, <laughs> I, I wrote it down, but now I don't have the match. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me make sure I have the right. I make a motion that we increase the hourly rate for I'm not sure I'm lined up right. Is it doesn't start with highway superintendent. 2708, am I right before I read it? Operator Op operator laborer? Yes. Okay, operator laborer be increased to twenty seven dollars and eight cents an hour. 
and operator part time. The three, the three year plus. At oh, sorry, right. right here. <laughs> Thank you. Three years plus. So, uh, three years plus increased to a rate of twenty seven ninety eight, and senior operator, which is. This, How many years as a senior operator, or it, is that a it's position? It's the person a, who is in sort of semi foreman, I guess. It's okay, a, a, a the, senior operator acting as a semi foreman be increased to thirty dollars and sixty cents an hour. Is that right? Yes. I mean, and because that, I didn't yeah. ask you since you're the state. Okay, and that was those were the ones that were not per se the. The first uh, one is the medium, and the other two are right. different than the medium. And the highway, and adding to that, the highway superintendent is eight percent above the median. Everyone else is brought to the median, but the highway superintendent. Right. So you could add that in your motion, and then follow up state. And the highway superintendent to be one percent above the median. Eight, eight percent above so, the median. To a salary of eighty-four thousand two hundred and twenty-four dollars and thirty cents. Thirty-four cents. Okay. Think that all's going to make sense when you listen to it. It all makes sense to me. Okay. You, you got it? I yeah. Think. Anybody else, it might not. But oh. <laughs> the okay. highway superintendent, should we add the reason that it's 8% above, which is as previously agreed upon to compensate for the responsibilities of building superintendent? Is that what it was? Yes. That's what the agreement with the select board is. Right. But just to have that as part of the motion. So if anybody questions, why is it 8%? Are uh, you saying I should amend the motion to try to just incorporate that? Add that in. Add that in. I, I, I think it's, you, you got it into the meeting recording. I think. And when that's... I do the minutes, it will reflect what we want to say. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I will reflect accordingly. Okay. So I have a motion made. Second. And second in to make those adjustments. I'll take a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. Brenda? Aye. And myself, I'll abstain. So it's carried. Okay. Now I think we can do a motion to do everybody else. That was below average to the median. Does that sound right? Right. Yes. Okay. I'll do that. I'll make a motion then to bring everyone at all the positions, and I'll I guess it's best to read them off. Um, the first one that we did. The correct me if I'm wrong, the first one will be the full time police officer. Then the part time police officer. And the custodian. Those three, am I missing any? Because the library was going to be left alone. Right. Let that be. We did a separate motion for Jeff. Right. right. All right. So just to reiterate, a motion to bring the the full time police officers, the part time police officer, and the custodian to the median, the actual median. Second on that. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? If not, a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. Brenda? Aye. And myself? Aye. Okay. Now, what do we got? On the agenda should be what the COLA. 
Do we want to disrupt it? You know, I think I'm going to have to duck out in about five minutes. Okay. Um, I think we should at least, if, if we don't want to make a decision tonight, that's probably fine. But I think one of the things that um, I'd like to bring forth, and I and I had I had asked that be included in our packet, and that was a couple pages out of the um, the housing production plan that was just done for the town of Waitley. And these numbers are this is all a report from. You. 2023, so the numbers are all good and, and accurate. Should still be good. I mean, in the, the few things that I wanted to point out when we look at our colas is what it costs to live in Waitley, and especially like on this page 32, when you look at um, necessary income to afford to live in Waitley. And the point I would like to make sure people start to realize and are aware of is it seems kind of odd for us to expect our some of our employees to live in Waitley when what we pay them, they can't afford to live in Waitley. And, you know, I realize in many cases there may be dual incomes and things like that to make things better, but... Um, Certainly, we have one or two positions that are that presently are elected, where you have to reside in the town to be employee. And if we're looking at such a disparity in what the town pays versus what it costs to live here, it's just something that I feel should be thought about a little bit when we make a decision on our COLA. When I saw these numbers, I thought it was, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of startling to see what it costs to live in Waitley. And I know some of the cases like with me with the highway department, I'm fortunate one of the highway, highway department employees is still relatively young and lives with his parents. However, everybody else that I have, they can't live in Waitley for what they make. And so like when we look at response times, when we look at our firefighters, our police officers, you know, if we are having employees that can't live in the town because it's just too expensive to live here, I think we need to look at that some way, somehow. So that's why I had asked that these couple pages be put in. Um, this whole report is, just that is online, right? That or is that? I believe it is online. I think so. Yeah. I mean, if it, it's it's some really interesting information, if you ever have any time yourself to take a look at. I can also send it to you guys if you'd like. I have the full report, it. but um, again, it's just something that I would like to have in the back of our minds when it comes to discussing with Cola. Yeah, in the finance committee, we always get comparables what other towns around us, like the salary survey we just got, which is, you know, becomes something of a Bible, not exactly, but um, not even enough of a Bible, but yeah, so that would be interesting to see, because a couple of years ago, didn't they raise, like, Social Security or something, so we had an actual figure on that, which was pretty big raise, and then we had the local colas, and that was helpful to look at. That's always a fight with finance committee. I mean, there's right. no you secret know. there. That's <laughs> right. No, you're right. But do does everybody on the finance committee do they know what the necessary income is to to afford? You know, that's well. In my two and a half years on the finance committee, I've never seen that information come through. But yeah, you know, so it's next just, meeting. Yeah, yeah, it's just some food for thought sure. to, to, to realize. And we can't expect our employees to, um, 
I mean, I know it's getting late. If we want to set another meeting up and we'll discuss a call, and maybe we'll have some more information from other towns. But why don't we talk about setting another meeting since the call is not on our agenda? Does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it midnight for you, Joyce? Or after? It is. Just turn midnight here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. But it's going to be worse, and like in a week or so, we change the clock, so it'll be oh. uh, an hour, another hour different. Oh dear, you're a sport. Well, you're Trish, going forward, or Monday night's good for you? Uh, yeah, because Tuesdays are out. <laughs> I have select board and finance, so yeah. Mondays are good. Okay. That's what we have been working with lately. I just wanted to make sure that it was in a. Okay. Uh, are we thinking Monday a week from now or two weeks from now? I can't do either of the next two weeks. I okay. could do April 1st, April 8th. I'd almost be inclined inclined to go with the first. I, it'd be helpful if, if we have a little bit more idea, maybe what some of the other neighboring communities are, or because I I really think that the finance committee will right. like right. they'll want they're going to want to know they're going to ask that question. Oh, that's they like the that's, Bible. Like, that's like we're not going to do that. It's hard to get them to do as much. Uh, we to try to make a decision before we have anything. So, right. I agree with that. So, April 1st? April 1st is fine for me. Five o'clock? Five. That good for you, Joyce? Yeah, every, yeah, every Monday is, uh, every Monday night at this time is open. <laughs> <laughs> 11 o'clock for you then? <laughs> uh, are you, so, well, um, Right, that's starting at five Eastern time. Five, then? five Eastern, okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So April first, five p.m. Thank you, everyone. Um, motion to adjourn. Okay. Okay. But since we're on Zoom, I'll need to do a roll call. Joyce. Aye. Susan. Aye. Betty. Aye. Brenda. Aye. Myself. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.